In this video, we're going to demonstrate equivalence style proofs. So, again, we're going to start with basic equivalences, and then we're going to employ transitivity of equivalence to justify our reasoning. Well, what's transitivity? If you have an expression 1 it is equivalent to expression 2, and expression 2 is equivalent to expression 3, then by transitivity, expression 1 is equivalent to expression 3. So if we can find, start with a predicate, and find equivalent predicates by using our basic equivalences, then the first original predicate is going to be equivalent to the last manipulation by this transitivity. So in order to convey this style of proofs, what I'd like to do is just go through an example. And as promised, I'm going to look at contrapositive one more time. If I want to prove that P implying Q is equivalent to not Q implying P, then with equivalent style proofs, what I'm going to want to do is start with one of the sides. I can think of trying to prove that this left-hand side is equivalent to this right-hand side of my equivalence. So this predicate is equivalent to this predicate. Now, where should I start? One strategy that I like to use is to start with the side that seems to be most complicated. So in this particular case, I'm going to look at not Q implying not P, because it seems to me the right-hand side is a bit more complicated. OK, so now what I'm going to do is find my list of basic equivalences to try to see if I can show that this is equivalent to P implying Q. Where should I start? Well, if I were going to evaluate this predicate, I would use negation before implication. And when I'm working with proofs, I do exactly the opposite, work backwards. So I'm going to try to take care of this implication first. And I notice that one of the laws of basic equivalences was about implication. It said if you had an expression implies an, another expression, it's equivalent to the negation of the first or the second. Well, let's see what that would mean in our case. That would mean that this would be equivalent to not, not Q or not P. Now, to describe my reasoning, I know that these two predicates are equivalent to one another. I'm going to use the symbol equivalence just to remind myself of that. And then I'm going to describe the basic equivalence I used inside little brackets. Um, and in this particular case, I used implication. Often I just use the symbol imply to represent implication because I'm too lazy to write out the word. So now where am I? Well, notice I have a negation of a negation. It seems to me that maybe I should take care of that. And I recall one of the basic laws was that if you have the negation of a negation of an expression, it is equivalent to the original expression. So not not Q is Q or not P. And that's by negation. Hmm, where to go next? Well, one thing that I sometimes do if I'm not sure where to go next is I go back to my original and think about what I want to prove. I want to prove that this is equivalent to this. And I know that implication means that the 
left hand side is equivalent to not P or Q. I don't have not P or Q, I have Q or not P. But I can rearrange these because I know that disjunction is commutative. So by commutivity, I'm just going to write COMM. This is equivalent to not P or Q. But I recognize that not P or Q by implication is P implies Q. And so I'm done because this is the left hand side. Hence, P implying Q is equivalent to not Q implies not P. Notice Again, where did the transitivity come into play? This is equivalent to this, which is equivalent to this, which is equivalent to this, which is equivalent to this. So the first predicate is equivalent to the last. But also, the last predicate is equivalent to the one before, which is equivalent to the one before, which is equivalent to the one before, which is equivalent to the first. So the last predicate is equivalent to the first. Again, equivalency is um, commutative also. I didn't have to, to prove equivalence, use implication both ways because this equivalence style took care of that. So this is what we would call an equivalence style proof. What are the, the ingredients? T to prove something correct, what I in, and if it involves an equivalence, what I need to do is start with one side and by applying the basic equivalences one by one, what I do is I transform it or manipulate it to look like the other side. In between each of my equivalent predicates, I actually use the symbol equivalence and justify my reasoning because it's easier for us to follow one another's thinking if I use this strategy. So this is what I call equivalent style proof and this is the strategy we're going to be using a lot throughout the course. Next ex um, video I'll do another example.